in in Georgia, not the US state, um, which Alex <laughs> and all of our US viewers thought I was referring to. Um, I, I, I'm old enough to remember in 2008 when the Russo-Georgia war started, there were people on Yahoo Answers, um, if anyone remembers what that was, um, asking, I hear about the Russia-Georgian war. I live in Georgia. There are no Russian troops here because you know, a bunch of Georgians in the US thought that the news was talking about a Russian invasion of their state when they were talking about a, a war uh, between the country of Georgia and Russia, which um, Georgia, then a US client state, had instigated um, at enormous cost to itself. Um, you know, uh, it, it, does this remind you of anything in the, in the here and now? So, yeah, um, Georgia had an election um, over this weekend. Um, it was uh, in the lead up. It was uh, uh, what's the word? It, it was highly fraught. Um, and there were a large <laughs> number of wet. It's so Western British of you. Funded, there was a large number of Western funded NGOs. <laughs> Um, and also the Western funded op uh, what opposition that was crying fraud in the lead up to the election. Right. Um, and, and now you have George's president, um, a French citizen called Salome uh, Zura Bichili, Bichvili, emphasis <laughs> on bitch. Um, she has now. Um, I saw this amazing, and we'll get into this, but I saw this amazing tweet. Uh, 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 allegedly, Salome, um, George's uh, Fre French-born president, um, was saying, I didn't move back to Georgia for this. Um, and what she means by that is the victory of Georgia Dream, which is this, um, uh, in some ways, nationalist, in some ways, libertarian party that has ruled Georgia uh, for many, uh, since 2012, I believe. Um, and right. they have uh, struggled to maintain a balance between not pissing off Russia, which is their much bigger, uh, and indeed based on 2008, um, their uh, uh, a belligerent neighbour, um, and, and also striving towards EU and NATO membership. They've jumped through every hoop created for them by the EU, um, and this isn't enough for Brussels and their ultimate controllers within Washington, if not, you know, Langley, Virginia, CIA country. So um, the, 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 the election result pointed to a very clear win um, for Georgia Dream. This is kind of in line with a lot of like of Western opinion polls, which pointed to Georgia Dream um, being supported by a majority of, 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 of Georgians. Um, as again, as we've discussed uh, before on active measures, uh, in the months leading up to this, there were major opposition protests, uh, demonstrations where people were pissed, uh, uh, well, some Georgians were pissed off that they, they felt their government were, was um, towing an anti EU line. Um, of course, Georgia is not even in Europe, it's next to Iran, so it's part of Asia. But yeah, that basically. Um, there, 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 there was a mass push for uh, unrest before and during the election campaign. This didn't really happen. And now we're getting a lot of conflicting narratives about what happened on the ground, including that the result was fraudulent. Now, um, I would ask, um, uh, Alex, if you could draw up the, the Jacobin article. Sure. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. So um, this is an article uh, written for Jacobin, the the CIA left um, in many ways. But like in all seriousness, no, um, it's called In Georgia, a National Election is a Geopolitical Struggle. And it's written by uh, an individual named Brian uh, Gigantino. Uh, uh, G Gigantino. Um, yeah, whatever his name is, this is a fantastic bit of journalism. I strongly urge everyone watching who's interested uh, in the Georgian election to read this in full. It's long, but it's well worth the wait, as it were. Um, it is a very, very, very strong analytical piece, really setting out the geopolitical aspects of the election in Georgia, the states involved, for the US, for the EU, for Russia, for China, for, and, and also for Georgia, and also um, delving into what Georgian citizens actually want. 
Brits. Now, um, it, 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 the, the, the point is made, and it's made very well with citations. Um, you know, read this guy's work, follow him on Twitter. He clearly knows what he's talking about. Good writer as well. That, um, yeah, that, that basically that he makes his point that, well, um, Georgians are, they are so desperate for, again, something different, something new, um, and also a more prosperous future that, well, they'll throw in with the EU, but if that doesn't seem like a winning proposition, they're they're they're, they're you know they're, they're willing to back away from it, which is what ha what has happened since um, the mass protests in in Georgia um, earlier this year. We covered this on Active Measures. There was a large number of people um, in the streets in in Tbilisi, the the Georgian capital. Great wine, so I've heard. Um, which is all they they thought that a law passed by their their Georgian dream led government, which um, forced uh, organizations receiving foreign funding to disclose their foreign funding, was going to be an end of their EU aspirations. Now, interestingly, as in response to Georgia passing this uh, legislation, which would bring Georgia in line with the UK and, and the US and you know, other countries that have. Um, some kind of uh, restriction on the statute. Yeah, yeah, yeah. On the statute book for, for organizations or individuals who are earning um, money from abroad uh, to disclose that publicly and to register as foreign agents. Um, this was a huge standoff between uh, the Georgian government and the US and the EU. And um, they went ahead with it anyway, um, you know, all power to them. And uh, the result was the US, the US government sanctioned, I think the EU did too, they sanctioned members of the government for, for daring to do this and they punished them. Now, the response was, uh, for, from many average Georgians, was to reject the EU because they were confronted with the reality of their country's vassalage under US hegemony. And they didn't like it, like one bit. And so since then, earlier this year and the, the similar protests played out last year there's been a growing level of support for georgia dream the the, the georgian government um uh yeah like and and so i mean this was billed as a, a referendum on eu membership in georgia well look at the results people have voted against joining because they understand that it means um, unquestioning bootlicking fealty at all times or there's going to be consequences and they don't like that yeah um i i think that it's really important here that we also recognize that georgian dream has not uh ha has not didn't i mean didn't suddenly become anti-eu no the eu became anti-georgian dream because of yes. this law ostensibly because of this law really what I think is that it's a situation like Venezuela, which we've seen um, now, especially with these disputed election results, opposition led by uh, Zora Bishvili, the uh, Brzezinski acolyte and uh, who barely speaks Georgian and never visited the country until she was in her mid thirties. Um, she she's, she's the Maria Karina Machado of Georgia. And the idea here is to op to you, to have a, a unrest, a, have a regime change in Georgia so that they can use it to open up another front against Russia because Ukraine desperately needs that. Uh, Ukraine cannot mm -hmm. survive in this war unless Georgia goes to war with Russia. So I think that was the idea, and the foreign agents law was just the just the excuse. Um, so that's really important to remember. Georgia Dream didn't come out against EU. EU came out against Georgia Dream for for this law. Um, I also would point out, you know, that the the reason for this law is because Georgian politics are so heavily influenced by outside forces. They basically yeah. have no uh, sovereignty in the turn in, in the in the in the civil society. Their civil society is completely co opted. I mean, mm. when we were doing our reporting on this, we found, what was it, 90% of Georgian NGOs receive fu significant funding mm. from abroad, and there's one NGO for every 100 people in Georgia? Yes. So yes. their entire civil society sphere is just, like, corrupted by the West and its organizations yeah. like the National Endowment for Democracy. I published four active measures 
uh, clips from a video given by Damon, uh, a video address from Damon Wilson. It was a private video, which I hmm. uh, happened to get, um, which was encouraging uh, civil unrest. Um, uh, the the This is from you, the shame movement, which is the leading opposition NGO hmm. in Georgia, gets significant funding from the NED. Um, and these are the people that are leading the protests where they're like trying to tear down the walls of parliament. Um, they're do they're trying yeah. to do like January 6th there. Um, yeah, but and, I mean, and, I and think then, I, sorry, go ahead. Well, just go let, ahead, let, let ahead. me just finish this. And then, and then on, on top of the color revolution attempt earlier this year, which we both reported on extensively, there's a lot of great active measures material on that. I would encourage people to go back and find it. Um, mm. but on top of that, there was this coup attempt, uh, led by, uh, a Ukrainian mercenary group called the Georgian National Legion, where something like 20 of them were arrested uh, just a couple months ago, uh, trying to get into back into Georgia because they're from Georgia primarily uh, to overthrow the government. So uh, the CIA has tried color revolution. It's tried coup d'etat. And now as a last resort, they're disputing the election. So that's where mm -hmm. we're at today. Yeah, and it's just like I—I uh, I mean, I think I—I I, it, it, I, more generally, uh, several commentators have sounded the alarm about what's going to happen now, and like there are multiple U.S. Western-funded organizations that have made a lot of noise about alleged election fraud in the the Georgian vote. Um, again, it's just noise. Like, I mean, it's the the. the uh, 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 Sopiko Japaridza, who is a Georgian communist and a um, an absolute um, uh, absolute stellar mensch. journalist. Yeah, yeah, we, we are hoping we are hoping to get on the show um, next week for a, an election post mortem, um, as well as um, the aforementioned uh, Brian uh, yeah, Gigantino. Um, if um, I'm sorry if I'm saying your name incorrectly, like he, uh, they, they both they, they both alluded to the fact that on paper. The OSCE, the Oper uh, Organization for Security and Cooperation in Europe, and the N uh, the National Endowment for Democracy, they have, on the one hand, made a lot of noise about potential fraud, but then admitted that, well, the results like kind of fair, right? So, I mean, people are worried about where this is going to lead, and with good reason, because in Georgia in 2003, as Alex and I have discussed previously there was a color revolution i.e a coup um which got rid of the government at the time and that was based on claims that the result of the that year's election was fraudulent now um i can totally understand why people are frightened about this but i do think that the western funded opposition and the western funded ngos of which there are an enormous number in georgia i mean just frightening amount in georgia they were making they were attempting to make ruckus and cause mischief before the election right and now they're talking about staging protests and all sorts of other gubbins relate like following the result um actually i think the empire's ability to act or react in the in this context is very limited and also their their focus is elsewhere because it is uh, i i've heard the u.s election at the moment um you know so it's like uh, it's like really i don't think that that there there is much in the tank that they can offer in terms of trying to over like overturn this and like i have said um, their attempt to punish Georgia Dream for for pu for pushing and and indeed implementing a foreign agency uh, for, uh, sorry a foreign agent transparency law has boosted their domestic popularity. So the empire's kind of checkmated itself here, where it's like right. So what can we do? Attempt to overthrow the government, which has like mass public support. Um, probably won't work now particularly given that there are people like brian and Sop sopico who are keeping a very close eye on this on the ground right um you know uh yeah like like so that's probably not going to work well we could move against george dream but that's potentially going to backfire on us like it already has done so right. what can we really do now um not very much of anything you know and i, and I do think that there is a, a wide need for people on the on the anti-imperialist left um, or anti-imperialist of any ideological extraction 
to decolonize their minds because to a large extent the empire's power only really exists in people's minds now like like the wealth and military muscle which the us had at the start of the 2000s is long gone and it and believe me it ain't coming back like any like not not only anytime soon but just ever like it's finished it's it's over now right so it's like well what can they do well um nothing probably and we see this with um you know we, we, alex and i have discussed many times uh the uh attempt to crush ansarala's red sea blockade which was um, it was called operation prosperity guardian is quite a title um and it was um there were people all over social media and in the media saying well oh the houthis are uh, screwed now and this they're over and the, and the uh, uh, the yemenis are about to find out why the us doesn't have healthcare and then the us navy including their flagship aircraft carrier uss eisenhower went to the red sea and got smashed by Ansarallah and then left they didn't achieve anything right um and so it's like you know the, the, i mean what what are they going to do in georgia what can they do does it even matter to them really like like well, at this stage? i think i think it mattered to the ukraine project but uh yes I, I i think at this point they they are going to have to cut their losses um and really that's it uh we could see some more color revolution in in Georgia uh, in the mm. in the near future. I was asked when I was when we, when I was reporting for Active Measures on these protests. I was asked, "Well, do Georgians want to join the EU?" Um, I didn't have an answer, and I admitted that I didn't have an answer. I said mm. I haven't seen the polling, but in October there will be an election, which will be a mandate on that will it will serve as a mandate mm. on that and we have that mandate and it seems that uh the majority of georgians uh mm. would would rather um look out for themselves look out for their own country's economic future than to uh tie themselves to the european union as it is in basically free fall yeah absolutely and it, i mean it's like but then what is the proposition for joining the eu now but you know, I mean, I again, I'm I'm old enough to remember the initial wave of EU enlargement in the former Soviet sphere in the early 2000s, when it was like, well, I mean, these were in in to take Hungary for an example. You mentioned them earlier. They were poor countries which had for a very long time been cut off from the rest of the world. The um, the proposition for joining was very obvious because they would be economically and politically and otherwise integrated with the thriving Western world. Um, thriving because the empire was at the absolute peak of its pomp and circumstance and strutting across the global stage. You know, there was a very clear uh, uh, benefit um, and argument for joining. Um, fast forward to date, it's not so clear cut, particularly if it's going, particularly if that results in, if membership results in your policies being drawn up for you in Brussels to yeah. your detriment. And, um, you know, the, um, you mentioned uh, Vucic in, in, in Serbia, by no means a pro-Russian uh, puppet as as he is almost axiomatically referred to like in the mainstream media, like he's made the point, like, well, look, like, you know, we provide subsidized energy to our citizens. We couldn't do that if we sanctioned Russia as Germany wants us to do. Well, I mean, you know, bearing in mind that like millions of people benefit from that. Um, who's going to want to join the EU? Actually very few. Um, you know, in, in, the, in the case of Georgia, when you're, yeah, you're this kind of poor post-Soviet, backwater um at least from the perspective of of brussels and washington um what's the benefit for you it's not very clear at all um and i i, I yeah you know as we've seen the government standing up for itself and 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 going ahead and passing this this legislation which was like so controversial and, and was attended by all this rhetoric about how the georgian government was uh um democratic backsliding as we've discussed before very common <laughs> common very common trope um the, the betraying its citizens like all this other all this other rubbish um actually people went for that like they they were they were rather energized by what it seemed like their government 
for, for once standing up for their um, interests. And I might add as well that, well, you know, another disincentive from the Empire's perspective is, well, they've already managed to push Georgia closer to Russia and China, which the US has spent 35 years trying to reverse. They've spent spent decades trying to turn Georgia against Russia. And it's like, well, at this stage, if we do penalize the Georgian government further, like in um, then that's going to result in in people turning further east just by token of sheer political gravity. And it's like, well, yeah, I, I think I think I think they are they are out of options and they're, and they're out of they're out of good choices at this stage. Hey, everyone, um, if you enjoyed this video or, or any of our other content, uh, please give us a follow on Twitter or subscribe to us on YouTube. It will help us beat the algorithm oligarchs. Thank you.